Assalamu alaikum and good afternoon everyone. Okay, today we are going to talk about learning theories. Okay, so why we talk about learning theories is that we want to understand how people learn. Okay, so we can understand better how people learn and we understand the philosophy behind the uh, learning theories. So the paradigms of uh, learning theories uh, consist of the behaviorism, cognitivism, constructivism, humanism or in other words it's also called as connectivism. What is theories and model? Okay. So what is theory? A theory provides a general explanation of observations made over time and a theory explains and predicts behavior. A theory can never be established beyond all doubt and a theory may be modified. Theories sometimes have to be thrown out completely if thoroughly tested, but sometimes a theory may be widely accepted for a long time and later disapproved. And what is a model? A model is a mental picture that helps us to understand something we cannot see or experience directly. And now I'm going to talk about the behaviorism theory. Okay? So behaviorism is more concerned with behavior than with thinking, feeling or knowing. Okay? Behaviorism is the first be th uh, learning theories okay, in the 50s. It focuses on the objective and observable component of behavior. The behaviorist uh, theories all share some version of stimulus response mechanism of learning. So behaviorism originated with the work uh, of uh, John B. Watson, an American psychologist. Watson held the view of uh, psychology should only concern itself with the study of behavior. So behaviorism comes from the term behavior and he was not concerned with the mind or with human consciousness. Okay? So nothing to do with the mental thinking. He considered it as paramount, paramount that men could be studied objectively like rats and apes or even dogs. Next is the classical conditioner by Ivan Pavlov in 1927 began working with learning through classical conditioning. Initially the dog only salivated okay, when it was eating. So later Pavlov noticed that the dog uh, salivated when he carried out the food into the room. So he became curious as to why this change had taken place. He thought that there were both learned and unlearned components to the dog's behavior. So he began experimenting with different stimuli and if he rang a bell immediately before giving food to the dog, eventually the dog would salivate, salivate and merely respond to the sound of the bell. So he generated terminology to describe his observation. So an unconditioned stimulus or UCS such as food, generates an instinctual reflective, reflexive yeah, unlearned behavior such as salivation when eating. So this salivation was called undi unconditional uh, response because it was not learned. And the bell formerly a neutral sound of the dog become conditioned learned stimulus and the salivation become conditioned response. Therefore, even Pavlov have a stimulus response that is the bell is the uh, stimulus, the bell is the stimulus and the saliva is the response. Now this behaviorism also is, is, uh, is associated with the name of B.F. Skinner who made his reputation by testing Watson theories in the laboratory. Skinner ultimately rejected Watson's almost exclusive emphasis on reflexes and conditioning. Skinner believed that people respond to their environment but they also operate on the environment to produce certain consequences. Thus, they participate in feedback loop as important part of a larger system. Skinner developed the theory of operant con conditioning. The idea that we behave uh, the way we do because of this kind of behavior has a certain consequences in the path. So presupposition of behaviorism so behaviorism is naturalistic, so this means that the material world is the ultimate reality and everything can be explained in terms of natural laws. Man has no soul and no mind, only a brain that responds to external stimuli. So a central tenet of behaviorism is that thoughts, feelings, intention and mental processes do not determine what we do. So nothing uh, for behaviorism, 
nothing is involved with mental. Behaviorism views behavior as the product of conditioning. Humans are biological machines and do not consciously act, rather they act to stimuli. Consistently, behaviorism teaches that we are not responsible for our actions. If we are mere machines without minds or soul reacting to stimuli and uh, operating on our environment to attain certain ends, then anything we do is inevitable. Behaviorism is manipulative. It seeks not merely to understand human behavior, but to predict and to control it. So from this theory, Skinner developed the idea of shaping by controlling rewards and punishment. If you can shape the behavior of another person. Connectionism by Thorndike. One of the Thorndike greatest uh, contribution of psychology was the law of effect, which states that response which occur just prior to a satisfying state of affairs are more likely to be repeated. And responses just prior to any annoying state of affairs are more likely not to be repeated. The second contribution of his uh, rejection of the notion that man is simply another animal that can reason. He believed intelligence should be defined sol solely in terms of greater or lesser ability to form connections. Several additional laws form part of Thorndike learning theory. There is one is called multiple response, two uh, set or attitude, three prepotency of elements, for response of analogy. So number one, let's say multiple response. In any given situation, the organism will respond in a variety of ways if the first response does not immediately lead to a more satisfying state of affairs. So problem solving is through trial and error. A set or attitude, there are predisposition to behave or react in a particular way. These are unique for species group or related species and may be culturally determined in humans. Prepotency of elements. Uh, Tondai observed that a learner could filter or out irrelevant aspect of a situation and respond only to significant elements in a problem situation. Response of analogy. In a new context, Responses from related or similar contexts may be transferred to a new context. This is sometimes referred to as a theory of identical elements. In connectionism, they have uh, associative shifting. It is possible to shift any response from one stimulus to another. And we have law of readiness. A series of responses can be chained together to satisfy some goal which will result in annoyance if blocked. Okay. So there are a series of responses. And then law of exercise, connection becomes strengthened with practice and weakened when practice is discontinued. So there will be uh, continuing exercises. Okay? So but when you practice more, it will be strengthened and you become more confident. Okay? And number eight is uh, intelligence is a function of number of connections made. So I have discussed uh, three uh, psychologists on behaviorism, that is on Skinner, we have discussed on Pavlov, and I have told you about the uh, Thorndike. So all these are behaviorist uh, theory, okay? And uh, what we see in today's world today is like uh, the uh, computer assisted instruction where we have uh, the uh, stimulus response like we click an answer, we click a certain question and there's a response, good, bad, or try again or uh, don't give up, you know. So that response, the stimulus response is also comes from the history of behaviorists and is applied in today's world, in today's, uh, in any uh, multimedia element, okay. In the uh, website, like when you click any hyperlink, there is some responses. So stimulus response. So these are behaviorism theory that apply up to today in today's world, in education. The next learning theory after behaviorists, since behaviorists uh, do not fulfill the mind, has got nothing to do with the mind, it's only action and behavior and stimulus and response. And now we move on to connectivism, that is something to do with the mind, with the brain. 
So Piaget stressed that the development of knowledge, representation and manipulation is not genetically uh, programmed into the brain. So he viewed children as young scientists who are driven to understand their world, to change their understanding in the face mistaken predictions about the world. Changes of knowledge structures, structures drive change in fundamental cognitive capabilities. So in cognitivism, the, the stress is more on to cognitive cap capabilities. Okay? This seemingly natural progression of cognitive capabilities emerge in an orderly way because certain way of thinking must be mastered and for the foundation of subsequent ones. The later ones cannot emerge until the early ones has been mastered. So in cognitive theory, you have to master from one stage to another, then only you can move on to another stage. Okay? So it's involved with the uh, cognitive capability. So there are stages of cognitive development where Piaget sees that from age 0 to 2, it more involved with sensory motor, where the child learns by doing. So looking, touching, sucking, the child has also a primitive understanding of cause and effect relationships. Object permanence appear around 9 months. So when a child is a, from 0 age to 2 years, they have got nothing to do with mental okay, or no cognitive development. And when a child is from 2 years old to 7 years old, it is called the uh, pre-operational stage. The child uses language and symbol this time. So including letters and numbers. So egocentrism is also evident. Conservation of marks, the end of the uh, pre-operational stage and the uh, beginning of a concrete operation. So at this stage when it is uh, 2 to 7 years old, they start to use numbers, figures, letters. So you can see when the child is from uh, two years old up to standard one, they start to recognize A, B, C, like that. And then when it is uh, seven to 11 years old, this is called concrete operation. Okay? So the child concentrates, uh, demonstrate conservation, reversibility, serial ordering, and a mature understanding of the cause and effect relationship. So at this stage, when the child is at seven to 11 years old, thinking process is being uh, is taken place and at this stage is at concrete level okay when a child is 12 plus 12 years old okay or 12 plus this is called the uh, formal operation where the individual demonstrate abstract thinking already so including logic deductive reasoning comparison and classification so if you want to a child to do a high order thinking skills like what we discussed in the Bloom's taxonomy two weeks ago, so you, you need to see that your audience must be at least 12 years of age above. Because at this stage, we understand in cognitivism says that it is a formal operation. So in this cognitivism theory, we understand that it has nothing to do with stimulus or response, but in cognitivism theory, Everything is doing with the mental, everything involved with mental activities. So third learning theories will be constructivism, where we understand that this is Vygotsky. And uh, Vygotsky shared many of Piaget's uh, view about child development, but he was more interested into social aspect of learning. So we, have, we call it as uh, social constructivist learning okay, by Le Vygotsky. Vygotsky differs from, uh, differs from discovery learning, which is also based on Piaget's ideas in that, that the teacher and older children play important roles in learning. So constructivism uh, looks into discovery learning. Okay? The teacher is typically active and involved. Okay? And then the classroom should provide a variety of learning materials, including electronics, and experiences and the classroom culture provides the child with cognitive tools such as language, cultural history and social context. So in constructivism, what we see like uh, we are doing in the classroom today, active learning, uh, collaborative learning, we are using all the uh, social media, social tools. So all these apply to constructivist theory, okay, on the uh, social constructivist theory. And Vygotsky also explained about the uh, zone of proximal development. It is a concept okay, well known 
and it refers to the observation of the uh, children when learning a particular task or body of information start out by not being able to do the certain task. So the zone proximal will, uh, will explain about the uh, level of uh, age and what he is able to do. Then they can do it with the assistance of an adult or older child mentor and finally they can do it without any assistance. The zone proximal development or we call it as the ZPD is the stage where they can do it uh, assisted but not alone. Okay? Thus the teacher often serves to guide a child or group of children as they encounter different learning challenges. So in constructivism, the, the instructor is a facilitator, okay? is a guide by the side already. It's not uh, the, the teacher is on the stage now. So it, the teacher's role is uh, as a facilitator in the classroom. So in constructivism, while there can be a wide variety of activities and content in the white god skin classroom, there are four principles that we need to uh, apply in the uh, constructivist manner. There is learning and development is a social collaborative activities. We have to know that learning and development is social collaborative. And the zone of proximal development can serve as a guide for uh, curriculum and lesson planning. And then classroom activity should be reality based and applicable to the real world. So all the activities should be based on real world example. Okay? And uh, learning extends to the home and other, uh, other than out of the school's environment and activities of all learning situations should be related. So learning does not only enclose to the four walls of the classroom, but learning takes place at 24 hours, uh, 7 days a night and everywhere at any time at any place. Now we talk about the uh, social learning theories by Bandura in the uh, constructivism theory. So Bandura early works in the 1960s represent one of the bridges of behaviorism to cognitive model for learning. So Bandura is the uh, continuation of uh, behaviorism to cognitive model for learning. So social learning is the process of learning by observing a model and then duplicating a skills, process, strategy or task that is demonstrated by the model. This occur without overt instructional activity and the model may not even know he or she is serving as an instrument of learning to the uh, observer. According to Bandura, this type of learning is an information processing activity. Factors influence uh, observational, observational learning theories in, by Bandura is attention, retention, motor reproduction, reinforcement and incentive. So for attention, the learner must have his or her senses in directed at the uh, model. Retention, coding and storing the uh, pattern so that they can retrieve. This may include the uh, vivid imaginary of uh, verbal description. For motor reproduction, something to do with uh, kinesthetic and neuromuscular patterns are practiced okay, with successive iterations until the model behavior is approximated by the uh, observer and uh, reinforcement and incentive propel the learner to attention, practice and retention. So you see that under Vygotsky, uh, under constructivism, you have the uh, reinforcement and incentive also. And they also need attention and retention. Okay? So like what I explained to you all in Ghani's uh, nine events of instruction, attention is one of the main thing. Okay? So to understand a person's, uh, to achieve learning, we have to understand the person's needs. So here we will like, I would like to explain to you about humanistic theory that is by Maslow hierarchy of needs. So Abraham Maslow was the uh, humanistic psychologist, uh, most famous for creating Maslow's hierarchies of needs. As a leader of uh, humanistic psychology, Maslow approached the study of psychology. Okay? by focusing on subjective experience and free will. So why I'm telling you this theory because if we, if we want a learning uh, process to happen, we have to understand a person's needs also. Okay? So how we, we understand what he, he needs, then we can try to compensate. Okay? So we understand this theory is very important. So he developed a hierarchy of human needs to explain how a person moves from his or her basic psychological needs to a higher level of self-actualization and transcendent needs. He believed that a uh, successful movement through every stage was vital in the development of personality. Okay? 
So those individuals who finally achieve self-actualization were said to represent optimal psychological health and functioning. So Maslow stretched the field of psychological study to include fully functional in individuals instead of those with psychosis and he shed a more positive light on personality psychology. So when you look at this diagram, Maslow's hierarchies of needs is a uh, tri triangle base where the most basic one is psychological, where a person needs breathing, food, water, sex, sleep, homeostasis, excretion. This is the basic needs that a person needs. So if you want a person to do well, you will have to understand his psychological needs, his safety needs, love or belonging, the self-esteem needs and also self-actualization. So we cannot be teaching a human and uh, treating a person like a robot without understanding his needs. So this is what we call the Maslow hierarchy of needs. And uh, for safety, let's say, uh, we, we have to understand the security of the body, the uh, employment, resources, morality, the family background, okay, the health and property. So I understand like I'm supervising um, so many PhD students, sometimes these PhDs, um, you know, when you do your PhD, there's many um, uh, consequences, okay, and constraints that you have to, you have to face. So one of them is like family problem or health, okay, so you have to take care and you have to understand this. So. To, to have a successful PhD students, you have to understand all their needs also. Okay? And also love or belonging, let's say uh, friendship, family or sexual intimacy like uh, boyfriend or girlfriend. So everyone will need a partner. Okay? And also esteem, self-esteem, confidence, achievement, respect of others, respect by others. So uh, as a lecturer for more than 20 years here in USM, so I understand and I also respect my students besides they respect me also. So I respect my students' uh, point of view and I appreciate what they have done to uh, their work. Okay? And I give them some um, self-esteem or confidence. So this will, be, will guide them to become a good students. Okay? And uh, self-actualization that is the morality and uh, creativity. So when in the students are confident with self-esteem and conf uh, with all the uh, safety, psychological needs, the, the basic level, then they become very creative and they can solve problem confidently. Okay? So we are in this uh, lesson, I have talked about the uh, paradigms of learning theories. That is, the, uh, we, we start off with behaviorism and then we go on to connectivism and then constructivism and then I talk about humanism that is the, uh, the needs, the, the Maslow uh, learning theory, uh, learning needs okay? or the, we call the Maslow psychological needs and now we also need to know the uh, motivational okay? uh, motivation for a person how uh, a person is being motivated and uh, to achieve a uh, certain extent. Okay? So here I introduce you all John Keller's uh, ARCS uh, model that is the ARX model where A stands for attention, R stands for relevance, C stands for confidence and S stands for satisfaction. So in the ARX model attention is the, um, the first one that is a perceptual arousal that is uh, this one provide novelty and surprise. Okay? So it can be a perceptual arousal or it can be inquiry arousal and it can be variability that is incorporate a range of uh, methods and media to meet students uh, wearing uh, needs. So the first stage is attention and then it comes to relevance. Relevance means goal orientation means uh, present objective and useful purpose of instruction and specific methods for successful achievement. So in relevance also, it can be a uh, match objective to students' needs and motives. And uh, familiarity is the uh, present content in ways that are understand 
acceptable and that are related to the learner's experiences and values. So, uh, the second stage in the uh, motivational level is the uh, relevance. Next, we have to understand the confidence level. That is, learning requirement informs students about learning and performance requirements and assessment criteria. Okay? And after that, we have to know the successful opportunities, provide uh, challenging and meaningful opportunities for successful learning. So we have to provide uh, certain opportunities or challenges to the students. And we have to understand the personal responsibility, link learning successes to students' uh, personal effort and ability. Okay, so the third level for ARCS is confidence and the last level is the uh, satisfaction level, okay? Where uh, once they are, they, they can do a certain task or they can solve a certain problem, they will reach a satisfaction level. That is the intrinsic reinforcement or the extrinsic reward or is also called the equity. For the intrinsic uh, re reinforcement, encourage the support of intrinsic enjoyment, something that is inside, intrinsic of the uh, learning experience while the extrinsic uh, reward will be something is outside okay provide positive feedback or reinforcement or motivational feedback and equity means maintain consistent standard and uh, consequences for success i mean you have to be uh, balanced between uh, the inner side and the outside of the uh, reward okay in learning theories besides understanding the uh, motivation factor the uh, 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 Maslow hierarchy needs, the needs of the students, we also need to know about the styles of learning. Okay? So one of the learning styles that I will explain to you is the uh, Cope's learning, experiential learning styles. There is, uh, he divided into uh, four stages, that is concrete, abstract, concrete versus abstract, and active versus reflective. And he also, uh, from the uh, concrete and uh, versus abstract, he has got accommodating uh, versus diverging and assimilating versus converging. In diverging, that is feeling and watching, these people are able to look at things from different perspectives. Okay? So they are sensitive. They prefer to watch rather than to do, tending to gather information and use imagination to solve problems. They are best at viewing concrete situations, several different viewpoints. So these people are diverging people. In COPE learning styles, diverging because these people perform better in situations that requires ideas generation, for example, brainstorming. People with diverging learning styles have broad cultural interests and like to uh, gather information. They are interested in people, tend to be in imaginative and emotional and tend to be strong in arts. People with diverging style prefer to work in groups, to listen and open mind, and to receive personal feedback. So you need to understand how people learn. So in, you can consider whether these people are a diverging person or a converging person. Assimilating is watching and thinking. The assimilating learning preference is for concise, logical approach. Ideas and concepts are more important than people. These people require good, clear explanation rather than practical opportunity. They excel at understanding wide-ranging information and organizing it in a clear, logical and a format way. Okay, people with an assimilating learning styles are less focused on people and more interested in ideas and abstract concepts. So people with this style are more attracted to logically sound theories than approaches based on practical value. So you can see that assimilating uh, people, they are only interested in ideas and abstract concept. Okay. These learning styles people is important for effectiveness in information and science careers. And in formal learning situation, people with this style prefer readings, lectures, exploring analytical models and having time to think things through. Converging, doing and thinking. People with converging learning styles can solve problems and will use their learning to find solutions to practical issues. They prefer technical tasks and they are less concerned with people and interpersonal aspects. 
people with uh, converging uh, learning styles are best uh, finding practical users for ideas and theories. They can solve problem and make decisions by finding solutions to questions and problems. So people with a converging learning styles are more attracted to technical tasks and problems than social and interpersonal issues. Okay? So a converging learning style enables specialists and technology abilities. People with uh, converging styles like to experiment with new ideas uh, to si simulate and to work with uh, practical applications. And the last style that is uh, being explained by COPE uh, learning style that is accommodating, that is doing and feeling. The accommodating learning style is hands-on and relies on intuition rather than logic. Uh, these people uh, use other people analysis and prefer to take a practical experiential approach. Uh, they are attracted to new challenges and experiences and to carry out plans. Okay? They com commonly add on guts, instinct rather than logical analysis. People with accommodating learning styles will tend to rely on others for information, then carry out their own analysis. So this learning style is prevalent within general population. So after explaining all the four types of learning styles, do you know which category you fall in? In learning theories, we also need to understand the intelligence of a person. So here I would like to introduce to you all multiple intelligence by Harvard Garner. So the multiple intelligence charts is uh, either verbal or linguistic intelligence, logical or mathematical intelligence, visual or spatial intelligence, bodily or kinesthetic intelligence, musical or rhythmic intelligence, interpersonal intelligence, interpersonal intelligence, just now is intrapersonal intelligence and the last one is naturalist uh, intelligence. So you can look at the chart here and when you say verbal is more to language okay and when you say logical or mathematical is more to reasoning, logical thinking and when we say visual is more to uh, visual images okay and when we say kinesthetic or bodily is more to feeling, touch, physical, hands-on, doing something, yeah? some activities. And then uh, we need to see whether these, uh, some people, they have very good ear, good hearing. They, this is called musical intelligence, okay? So, uh, where they have good sense of hearing, okay? They can catch, yeah? so they can create rhythm or express uh, mood or in the musical themes. And then we have this uh, intrapersonal intelligence that is uh, understanding uh, someone's feeling, okay, owns interior through thoughts and feelings. So intra is within the self, that means you, you understand yourself, whereas inter is between, okay, so interpersonal intelligence, so you understand uh, someone's needs, someone's feelings. And the other, the last one is naturalistic intelligence, that is the nature, you understand the nature, seeing the patterns of the way nature works, classifying things. So once you understand uh, a person's intelligence, you will, uh, you will be able to understand why he or she behave in that manner, or why he or she learn in that manner. So uh, by explaining the uh, in multiple intelligence, you will have a good a base learning background. Okay. So last of all, I would like to summarize all the learning theories that I have explained just now. There is uh, behaviorism, cognitivism, constructivism, and connectivism. Okay. So in uh, behaviorism, like uh, how I want to explain to you how people how learning occurs in behaviorism. There is uh, behaviorists look like a black box, observe behavior as the main focus only. Okay. While connectivism, uh, structured and computa computational, that is doing with the uh, mental, something to do with cognitive capabilities. While constructivism, there is a uh, social meaning created by each other learners. Okay, so experiential learning, constructivism, and connectivism is uh, the new theory now, which is uh, distributed within a network because of the uh, Web 2.0 with the social networking. Okay, 
So recognizing and interpreting the patterns of learning. So the, we call it by uh, George Simon that introduced this uh, connectivism theory. So how people learn that is through behaviorist, connectivist, constructivist, and connectivism. Then the influencing factors for behaviorists. Uh, for behaviorists, the nature is reward. That is the stimulus response reward. Or the, uh, in the computer, there is good, bad, try again, okay? good job. Okay? Then for cognitivism, the influencing factor is the uh, mental schema, existing schema, previous experience become uh, improved. Okay? And then for constructivism, engagement. So you see the term now, engagement is the main term now, participation and uh, social culture. And, and they begin to understand social cultural background in constructivism. And connectivism is diversity of the uh, networking, strength of uh, context between the uh, social network, okay? the influencing factors. While the uh, role of memory, as I said that behaviorism, memory is uh, nothing to do with uh, in behaviorism. It's only reward and punishment are the most influential thing in behaviorism, okay? And uh, in the uh, cognitivism, this uh, encoding, storage, and retrieval of information. It's stored in the, in the mental model and is retrieved back, okay? While constructivism is um, how the role of memory is, we look into the uh, uh, prior knowledge, okay? So the prior knowledge or the prerequisites will determine the, the learning for the next stage. Okay? And uh, connectivism, adaptive patterns represent of uh, current state, existing network. So something to do with the uh, networking. And how transfer occurs uh, through behaviorism, we will see that it is stimulus response, SR yeah, theory. While connectivism is uh, duplicating knowledge construction of uh, knower, okay? And constructivism, the uh, transfer occurs through socialization because we have engagement, okay? And connectivism is connecting to one to another through the uh, network. And the types of learning best uh, explained for each uh, paradigm of learning theories. For behaviorism, it is very much uh, task-based learning. Okay, it's a stimulus response task-based project, nothing to do with uh, mental thinking. For cognitivism, it's a reasoning, okay, clear objectives, problem solving. But we have to remember that uh, we cannot forget the history of behaviorists that will help us to write the uh, ob objectivist uh, learning outcomes, okay. So, and in constructivism, there is uh, constructivism that is uh, social, okay, and is ill-defined. And for connectivism, is uh, complex learning uh, theory, and uh, it's rapid changing through the uh, networking. So I, I have explained to you all four types of learning theories: that is behaviorism, connectivism, constructivism, and uh, connectivism. Therefore. We cannot forget the history of uh, all the learning theorists, and we forget, cannot forget that it is a, there is a link between behaviorists, cognitivists, constructivists, and uh, connectivism. That is what we have today in our learning theories. Thank you. Goodbye.